All right, hello. In this problem, uh, we've got a heavy safe uh, with a mass of 150 kilograms. Um, and it's close up against a wall. Uh, we're using a wedge with a five degree angle in here uh, to kind of push it away. Uh, so we know the coefficient of friction, um, static and kinetic, uh, between the wedge and the safe is 0.16. So that right here is 0.16. Uh, down between the wall and the wedge and between the safe and the floor, both of those coefficients of friction are 0.35. All right, so <clears throat> this is our setup, and we need to figure out what's this pushing force required to move the safe out from the wall. Uh, presumably, it's going to be easier than just kind of pulling the safe directly. Uh, so the point to our wedge. Um, so with this, uh, step one is going to be to draw free body diagrams of both the safe uh, and the wedge itself. Um, so the wedge. like that, the safe, it's more of a square. Um, on the wedge, we have F push. Uh, and I'm going to have what I'm going to call F1 over here on the wall. And then my friction force, uh, I'm assuming this is sliding or on the verge of sliding. Um, so that's going to be resisting the wedge going down, and it's going to be point 0.35 times F1, uh, and this 0.35 again is my static coefficient of friction. All right, over here, I'm going to have another normal force. This one's going to be F2, uh, perpendicular to the surface of the wedge, and again, this is a 5 degree angle. Um, and then over here, this is also going to be uh, the static coefficient of friction times F2, uh, so this is 0.16. F2. All right, so now over on my safe, uh, I've got the weight force. So 150 kilograms times 9.81 uh, newtons per kilogram. I'm going to get a value of 1,471.5 newtons, and that's the weight force. Uh, I'm going to get normal forces up on this corner from the wedge, and so this is going to be equal and opposite <clears throat> to this over here. So it's F2, and uh, the wedge is actually pushing down on the corner as well. Uh, and on the bottom, I have my last set of normal and friction forces. So I'm going to call this one F3, uh, and it's going to uh, be opposing kind of the sliding of this box over this way. Uh, so the direction is going to be that way. So it's going to be 0.35 F3. All right, so now I need to start uh, setting these up, setting up the equations of equilibrium, uh, and solving for um, these values. Specifically, I want to, in the end, find this F push value. Uh, but I need to start with the box. Um, so I don't know F2 and F3 over here. And I'm just going to be using in, this, in these problems the sum of forces in the x and sum of forces in the y. I am not going to be using any moment equations. Um, so looking at the box, the sum of forces in the x direction, uh, it's going to be F2 times the cosine of 5 degrees, the horizontal component of F2. Uh, minus the horizontal component of this piece right here. So it's minus 0.16 F2 sine of 5 degrees uh, minus this horizontal component down here. So 0.35 F3. Um, <clears throat> and that's the last of my horizontal components. So it's equal to zero. If I look at some forces in the y direction, I'm going to have F3 down here at the bottom. I'm going to have negative F2 times the sine of 5. That's the vertical component of this piece up here. 
uh, I'm going to have minus 0.16 F2 times the cosine of 5, the vertical component of this piece here. Uh, and we can, lastly, I'm going to have the weight force, so minus 1471.5 is equal to 0. All right, so I can need to solve at this point F for F2 and F3. I'm going to take my x equation first. Uh, and this basically can reduce down to um, 0.98225 times F2. Uh, it's going to be equal to 0.35 times F3. Uh, or F2 is equal to 0.356 F3. All right. <clears throat> so next we're going to uh, go and um, use my Y equation. And so for the Y equation, uh, what I have is going to be uh, F3 um, minus 0.247 times F2, and F2 is 0.356 F3 uh, is equal to 1471.5. All right, so solve for F3. That's going to be 1613.5. Two newtons. Uh, that lets me solve for F2, which again is just equal to um, 0.356 times F3, uh, which is equal to 574.9 newtons. All right, so now I have F2, I have F3. Uh, now I need to go back and I'm going to look at the wedge uh, and solve for both F1 and F push because I now have F2 it makes it easier to kind of makes it makes it so that I can solve for F1 and F push. All right, so now for the wedge, I have sum of forces in the x direction, and that's going to be equal to. Um, F1 minus F2 cosine of 5, it's the horizontal component of this piece here, um, <clears throat> plus 0.16 F2 times the sine of 5, uh, and that's the horizontal component of this piece here, and it's the last horizontal component, so I have equals zero. Sum of forces in the y direction, I'm going to have 0.35 times F1, that's the vertical piece here. Uh, I'm going to have plus 0.16 F2 times the cosine of 5 the uh, vertical component of this piece here, plus F2 times the sine of 5, vertical component of this piece here, uh, minus F push is equal to 0. All right, so I already know F2. F2 is going to go in, kind of in my equations wherever I have this. Uh, if I use this top equation, I can find that F1 is equal to 564.6 newtons. Uh, and then once I figure out F1, I can use my Y equation to solve for F push over here. And so this lets me solve F push uh, is going to be equal to 339.3 newtons. 
right? And that is the pushing force um, that I'm going to be pushing down on this wedge. And if I look back at my original diagram, that's the pushing force required to push this wedge down in, which would move the whole box over to the right. All right, so with that, um, we've got our final answer. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.